Melbourne has numerous proposed rail projects in the coming decades. One of the most interesting that is yet to be completed is the Somerton Rail Link, a line that would link Upfield with the growing northern suburbs of Donnybrook, Wallen and several others. In this video, I'll explain these proposed projects and whether it will be completed anytime soon. The Upfield line was originally opened from North Melbourne to Coburg in 1884, being extended to Somerton in 1889. However, this line has never really been opened particularly consistently, with the section beyond Coburg being closed and reopened several times. In 1956, the line from Faulkner to Somerton was closed, but it was reopened as far as Upfield in 1959 for workers to commute to the factories there. The Upfield to Somerton section was also reopened, but only for freight services, such as trains from the old Ford factory in Upfield to various destinations, including Sydney. This line continued in use for many decades, but its last recorded use was in 2003 for a few rolling stock transfers, including Hitachi's, for storage. Since then, this section of line has been completely abandoned, line neglected north from Upfield Station to near Roxburgh Park on the Craigieburn line. As a part of recording this video, I walked the line with Zach's rail stuff. Definitely go watch his video about that after this. A small section of the line is still used for train stabling at Upfield Station, and the corridor has been fully retained for future use. Most of the rail infrastructure, including sleepers, rails, and bridges, is still completely there. Nevertheless, in the early 2010s, there are initial proposals to potentially reopen this line for new use. The Public Transport Victoria Network Development Plan Metropolitan Rail from 2012 envisaged, among many projects, a potential reopening of the line which would occur as part of Stage 3 of the plan by around 2030. More recently, it was considered a possible priority project, which could be completed around the same time as the opening of the Metro Tunnel in Melbourne CBD. However, despite a business case supposedly being completed in 2018, there hasn't really been any further progress on this project. Additionally, an updated version of the Network Development Plan from 2018 further indicated that this project would be completed alongside the opening of the Metro Tunnel, but given the fact that the Metro Tunnel is now likely within 12 months of opening, and the Summerton Rail Link project is yet to commence, this almost certainly won't occur. So let's investigate what this project could potentially look like. Currently, the Upfield Line is one of Melbourne's worst served rail lines despite the very high demand that it has. There is only a train every 15 to 20 minutes during peak hours, and the line is frequently crowded. I've previously made a video in the 1980s plan to potentially convert the line to a light rail, but obviously the line has survived, but it continues to be quite neglected. When the metro tunnel opens in the not too distant future, the Upfield line is likely to get a small service boost, but the single track between Gary and Upfield will continue to be a major constraint. Hence, the first major part of any Summerton rail link project will be to duplicate this section of line. Provision has already been made at both the bridge over the M80 Metropolitan Ring Road and also at the Camp Road level crossing removal, completed in 2018. In these locations, you can very clearly see the space that has been left for a potential second track, and even some of the overhead staunchions actually are wide enough for two tracks. At Camp Road, there is also the possibility to reopen Campbellfield Station, a station that closed in 1956 alongside the cessation of the Faulkner to Somerton Rail Motor Service. And when the rail line to Upfield was reopened in 1959, Campbellfield Station was not reopened. The new Campbellfield Station would be an interchange for smart bus services and could also provoke redevelopment and investment in the surrounding area, which is currently generally a low density, light industrial style area, but it would definitely be a good candidate for more housing to be developed alongside the new rail line. Continuing north, Upfield Station would need to be rebuilt. The existing station is not only single track, but is also very out of date and largely unsuitable for modern use. Ideally, the level crossing at Barry Road would also be removed as part of this project. Upfield Station, like the area at Campbellfield, is surrounded by a mix of industrial uses, many of which have closed or are not being used to their full potential, as well as low density residential areas. Upfield would be another candidate for potential housing development along with the construction of this new upgrade. It is also worth noting that the stabling sidings at Upfield would need to be removed and would most likely be relocated to an expanded Craigieburn depot. Upfield is of course the current day terminus and hence north of here would be a completely rebuilt line on the old alignment. The existing infrastructure would be removed and replaced with a brand new double track electrified railway, continuing for several kilometres through the industrial areas in Somerton. In the long term, if these industrial areas are relocated, there could be a potential to add an additional station in this section. However, this would be many, many decades away. The line would then get to the junction with the Craigieburn line. 
Construction of the rail line in this area would prove to be very tight, as it would need to cross over not only the Melbourne to Sydney standard gauge line, but also the Craigieburn suburban rail line. Hence, it's most likely that this line would need to either go on a flyover or a trench beneath these lines somewhere in the vicinity of Roxburgh Park and the road bridge there. It is uncertain whether this line would stop at Roxburgh Park. I suspect that unless it is particularly difficult, it would make sense to add platforms here, both to expand service locally and to provide an interchange possibility with the buses in the Craigieburn line, but it isn't really essential. The line between Roxburgh Park and Craigieburn is of course already served by the Craigieburn line and it would continue to be so. For many years, when the Craigieburn line extension was being planned, it was considered that a station would be constructed at Patalos Lane. I think that this station could finally be built alongside the Somerton Rail Link. It would be served exclusively by Craigieburn trains and would be built alongside a bus interchange, park and ride and a road extension. Most likely, this station would be called either Patalos or would be called Roxburgh Park with the existing station renamed Somerton. Between Roxburgh Park and Craigieburn, there would be two new express tracks constructed for upfield Wallen trains. This would allow for the separation of services to minimise delays and allow for slightly faster travel times. Although the addition of the extra tracks is part of official plans, the station at Patalos Lane is really inconsistent in whether it appears in these plans or not. Then we get to Craigieburn. Craigieburn station is currently not a particularly well designed station, with only two platforms which cause delays for both V-Line and Suburban trains. As part of the project, Craigieburn would likely be rebuilt with four platforms, two for Craigieburn via Essendon terminating trains, and two for the Wallen via Upfield and V-Line trains. This would also allow for an upgrade to the facilities at Craigieburn Station. Suburban trains on the Essendon Broadmeadows line would continue to terminate at Craigieburn, and hence there would need to be sufficient interchange facilities provided for passengers to transfer between the lines, most likely some sort of footbridge or underpass. North of Craigieburn, the existing rail line would be electrified. There are increasing numbers of developments occurring between Craigieburn and Wallen, and the existing hourly V-Line service is not going to be sufficient. Hence, the upfield line would be extended to Wallen. As part of this, new stations would be constructed at Cloverton, north of Donnybrook, Beveridge and Lockerbie, and there would also be upgrades to the existing Donnybrook and Wallen stations, not to mention that there are potential for even more stations in the future. These stations would all serve as bus interchanges and there would even be the possibility of including some transit-oriented development, yes, transit-oriented development, in Donnybrook and Wallen. Interestingly, Donnybrook Station has in recent years already gone from being one of the least used V-Line stations to one of the fastest growing, as a result of suburban development occurring. There are several needs and justifications for these projects. Firstly, the upfield corridor is going to need upgrades and it makes sense to also expand the catchment with the new Campbellfield Station as well. The continuing development of new suburbs will almost inevitably require an extension of electrification to Wallen to ensure that there is adequate public transport service there and also to allow for V-Line Seymour services to not be overcrowded and pressured by suburban demand. Finally, it is often questioned why Wallen trains should travel via Coburg, to which it is generally stated that the existing line via Essendon will continue to get busier and busier and will not be able to cope as well with the demand for Wallen as the Coburg corridor could, which is better supported by trams and other modes in the inner suburban areas. So, will the Summerton Rail Link actually occur? The answer is almost certainly yes. The current government, for all they've done for public transport, seems very patchy when it comes to the western and northern suburban extensions. They seem to recognise the need for suburban train extensions, but can't provide the money for them. I would suggest that it's most likely that this project will occur sometime in the next 10 to 15 years, probably alongside or after the reconfiguration of the city loop. It's almost inevitable that this project will be brought on the agenda by one of the two major parties. The Liberals got a significant swing in the area in the last election, so I'd suggest that it's quite likely to be brought up by both major parties at the next election, even if the date for actual delivery might still be quite a while off. Thank you very much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in my next video again soon. Also, please watch Zach's video so he can feed his family.